Hey guys, so in episode one we talked about my three favorite exercises to build your glutes. Today we're going to talk about accessory or auxiliary movements, which are a little bit smaller, a little more specific, that are going to be geared toward complementing your compound movements or exercises. Some things to keep in mind with accessory movements, even though they're a little bit lighter, there are a few things that still matter. Form, mind-muscle connection, and understanding what it is that you're working. The first exercise we're going to talk about is your cable kickback or cable abduction. Now, this one, you, there are a lot of different variations, but I'm gonna show you the one that I like the most, and here is why. The cable kickback and cable abduction, typically you'll see the lever attachment at the ankle. What I prefer is a shorter lever. A shorter lever gives you a little bit easier control over the weight. Even though you might be still using a little bit less weight, you get way better my muscle connection, way better glute contraction, less engagement from the hamstrings and the hip flexors, and a little bit less stress on your lower backs. You can do single leg hip thrusts, split squats, single leg leg press, single leg RDLs, anything that really gets those muscles activated, establishes that really solid my muscle connection, and always remember to engage your core. The single leg hip thrust, you can do these either without a band or with a band. Obviously with the band, we're increasing resistance. You can also increase resistance using a plate or a dumbbell. With the single leg hip thrust, you always, like I mentioned before, over and over, want to engage your core. Make sure that those hips stay relatively level and you're really establishing that my muscle connection, locking out those glutes into hip extension and squeezing at the top. So with the single leg hip thrust, always, 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 you'll hear me say this very often, keep your core engaged. Keep those hips level, try to prevent them from tilting. Drive through the heels and really squeeze the glutes at the top. The last accessory movement we're gonna talk about is the seated abduction. Now, not all seated abduction machines are created equal. If you've gone to multiple gyms, you'll notice some of them have a slightly different angle of the seat, some of them have slightly different shaped pedals at the feet. So you're gonna to wanna to get a feel for what feels best on you. If you lean forward a little bit more, you'll feel a little bit more in your glute med, or the upper outer glute or that shelf. If you lean back a little bit, sit back in that seat, you're gonna get more of your glute max. You have to make sure the effort is there and you have to be honest with yourself about how much effort you're putting in. Are you really putting in the maximum effort or are you leaving reps out on the floor? That's something you have to ask yourself and that's something that only you can answer. But if you're not seeing the results that you want, you might wanna take a second look at how much you're putting into your training. If the effort's not there, you're not gonna see the results you wanna see. As we've talked about compound movements, we've talked about accessory movements, but we still need to talk about the specifics of training for hypertrophy, and that's really the numbers. Should I do high rep, low weight? Should I do low rep, high weight? We're gonna talk about that next time, so stay tuned.